thank you so much to the ushers. We did a grand And really, uh, you're gonna remember this. You remember one day you went to church and you thought oh, everything's awesome, and like, oh wait, we gotta come out and go to church and do a difference. Uh, but it's just great when you see a unified church. Come on. Yeah. You see a unified disciples come together, and we can make things happen. Come on. Man. But, uh, thank you so much to the ministry team. Uh, one quick message. If you don't have your phone, we are missing a phone, and I believe it's a Samsung phone. Uh, the angel has it, so if that's yours, uh, please talk to Angel. Amen. Come on, Barry. So, uh, but it's great to be here. You know, honestly, guys, this is my first time preaching in English. Oh, we are so honored, bro. So, maybe I, I preach Spanish and English. You know, you guys were the translation. There you go. Come on, bro. Prepare for service. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And, and, and really, for the Spanish region, we've been having night of atonement, night of a commitment, oh. of, of calling out disciples to be sold out. And mm. I believe that's everywhere in all the regions. Yeah. Really yep. That's so true, bro. Yeah. And, and that's what I want to preach about this morning for us to be prepared, but in what area? Right. So, uh, let's go to 14. Come on, bro. Vamos. Vamos, hermano. Kick me in the face. Amen. 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 It says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me, and does not, his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own lives, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to pull a tower. When you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it, for if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Mm. You know, we know the scripture. When someone sat down with you, count out the cost and said, hey, this is what it takes to be a disciple. That's right. Right? And we know what it takes. It takes everything. Yeah. Your heart, your money, your dreams, your goals. Your family, yep. everything. Yeah, right. And you study the Bible and you say, yes, yeah. I'm ready. Oh, amen. And then something happened, you were up here praying and you say, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. 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 Yes. But sometimes as disciples, we can kind of forget when it says that, estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it. Right. Yeah. right? This is not a, like a one month membership expiration. <laughs> 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 Die. Right. And, and at times as disciples, we can kind of forget, like, oh no, I, I, where's my discipleship tower? I forgot where it's at. Yeah. And you forgot the bricks, and you forgot to build it. Uh, and that's what Jesus is saying. Count the cost. Right. Come on. See if you have enough to complete it to make it to heaven. Come on, Zach. Come on. And, and just as we see in this passage, this man didn't count the cost, right? Right. He, he built it, he stopped, and everybody ridiculed him. And, and just as the people notice his tower, so do the people notice your tower when you stop building it. Wow. Yeah. They see your tower of discipleship. You're like, bro, what's going on? You're like, what? I'm fine. What are you talking about? Right. Bro, I can see your tower. There's spider webs now. Oh. Oh. You know, may, maybe most of us are doing great. Awesome. But I, I want to talk to those who are thinking about flying away. Come on, bro. I, I want to talk on, to those who are weak. Come on. You know, what prevents us from building our tower being weak and wanting to fall away? Yeah. Wow. Let's remember, being weak is totally okay. Yeah. It's totally okay, guys. Yeah. Come on. The Bible says that God chose the weak. So everyone here, guess what? We're all weak. Come on. Right? God chose that person who gets picked last in the soccer teams or basketball teams. Come on. God chose that person with the corner who doesn't say hi. You know, God chose that person. 
He's like, yes, I won that brother. Come on. I won that daughter. So they can become disciples. Come on, guys. Yeah. But let's understand this. Yes, it's okay to be weak, but it's not okay to stay weak. Come on, bro. And when we have this mentality, this part this of staying weak, we stop building our disciples' Right. You know, I believe there's only a few who, who, who are not committed. But I, I believe there's some who are spiritually weak. Come on. And so what is this, what do we need to do? What is the solution, you know? How do we get from weak to being strong? He does the Gideon. God does the Gideon. That's not a dance. That's actually a person. Come on, bro. Right dance here. Uh, but this is what I call a Gideon. Where he picks someone who is weak to be strong. Mm. And so let's go to Judges chapter 6. Come on, bro. This is awesome. Our title is Weakness to Strength. Mm. Come on, bro. Weakness to Strength. And, uh, you know, it's been awesome. Um, I, I, lately, I've been working out. Oh! Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's just incredible because, honestly, guys, uh, and I'm no liar, for the single brothers, you guys gotta. The whole world is real. Woo! Like, my diet didn't change, the food didn't change, oh, my sleeping didn't change, but the moment I put the ring on, I had to go Amen, bro! Oh, oh, no. Like, what's going on? I don't know the dad but yet. You know? But I'm like, got Come on, dad. And so I've been going back to the gym, and, and, and I realized how weak I am. Wow. You know, I go to the gym, and, and you... You know, you try to sit back in the day, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that was me, so we were back in my days, you guys watched this, watched the video. And, and I couldn't even do anything. Oh, man. You know, and then you see all the top guys, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Uh, and I realized how weak I am, right? But how do I get strong physically? Of course, perseverance, mm -hmm. consistency, not giving up. Yeah. But how does disciples, how do we get strong spiritually? Mm. You know, what is the exercise? What is the recipe for it? Mm. And before that, I, I would like for everyone here to write down three weaknesses that you have. Wow. Mm. That, that prevent you from being strong spiritually. Wow. Come on. What are the three things? Maybe it's impurity. Wow. Yeah. Maybe it's your lack of quiet times. Mm. Maybe it's Nervous. your emotions. Maybe it's oh. anything physical, <laughs> mentally. Yeah. Spiritually, it can be anything. What are some things that prevent you to be strong spiritually? Come on. Let's go to Judges chapter 6. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on, man. We're going to read a, a, good, a good amount. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, verse 1 it says, They slice the evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, because the power of the Midian was so oppressive. The Israelites prepared shelter for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites climbed across, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible. To count them for their camels, they invaded the land to ravage it. Meaning, so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because the Median, he, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians. I deliver you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. You know, point number one, be strong with vulnerable prayers. You know, it's so fascinating that in the books of Judges, when you study it, it is basically God's people going through a roller coaster. Yeah. Ups and downs, ups and downs. They're at the highs, and then they're at the lows. And constantly you see God rescuing them. And we see in this passage that the Israelites were completely weakened. You know, the Bible says they were impoverished. 
basically yeah. means to be weakened. Yeah. It's as if Satan just sucks out all of your strength, right? And you're just weak. You're exhausted. Wow. But really, why? This is because of their sin. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, I mean, I don't know if I were you, but if, if I was at that time looking at all these enemies, I would blame the enemies. Yeah. But the Bible says no, because of your sin. Wow. Yeah. You see, many times when we're in big troubles, many times when we're in sin, when we're weak, we can blame others. Oh, my disciple. Oh, He's not having beaten. Oh, oh, my Bible. Oh, my Bible. Oh, my Bible. Oh, oh, my Bible. Oh, oh, the money. Yeah. Oh, my marriage. The work. The oh, distance. We can blame a lot of people but ourselves. Yeah. And the Israelites they didn't get it yet. Mm. And so God was like, okay, what can I do? Okay, I'm going to make them more weak. Wow. wow. And so we see that the Israelites were impoverished. It says that they took two steps forward and three steps back. Wow. I don't know if you felt that way before. You know, oh, yeah. Like, I'm going to repent for sure, God. Come on. I'm going to stop watching this. I'm going to like be pure. And then the next day, boom. You go back. Like, I can do this again. And then boom, back again. It says that you're like going up the. the, the the, the stairs, the electrical stairs, but the electrical stairs go down instead of up. Stay master, stay master. Go smart, stay, brother. They're like, ah, come on, God. <laughs> but really, it's a time where God is taking everything from you yeah. so that you can focus on Him. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. You know, we 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 got to understand this. Opposition is opportunity. Yeah. When opposition comes our way, it's a great opportunity for you to cry out to the Lord. Yeah. You know, it's incredible. It says that they understood they were dead. They were weak. They planted crops. It was ruined. Everything they did was ruined. So they're like, okay, what do we do? Okay, let's cry out to the Lord. Right. And it's fascinating because it really doesn't say they cried out to the Lord individually. They just say they cried out. Maybe they went together by Bible talk, by house church, by super region, together as a church. I don't know. Right. Well, you're like, hey, boy, you ready to cry out? Let's cry out. You know? Let's go. I don't know. So they cry out to the Lord. And then it said that a prophet came and gave them good news. You know, when you cry out to the Lord, God delivers you. Yeah. I remember seven years ago. Uh, I was in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. For those who don't know me, I, I used to play semi-professional soccer. Oh, nice. Woo! Uh, Keep up! I attended a oh, university. Oh, uh, I, had a, I had a relationship back then. I wasn't a disciple, but I was just very engulfed with the world. And God, like, quickly was taking everything of me. He took away the relationships. He took away the school. I, I got kicked out of college because I, didn't, I wasn't doing great in my grades. Oh. And then, and then eventually, I got kicked out of the plane and I And I was bitter. I was bitter at God. I was like, God, why is this happening to me? And I started to blame others. It's my parents' fault. It's my, it's my relationship. It's the school. It's not me. Wow. It's the dog. And then I realized, Sorry. it is me. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the very first time, I remember, it was amazing, guys. I was like, you know what? I think God is calling me, wow. and, and I gotta like figure it out. But I gotta hey, cry out to Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I went in the middle of the night at the park. Every, everything was empty, and I just went outside. It was for the very first time I, as a human being crying out to God. Amen. And I cried out to God. I said, God, why? Why are you doing this? God, if you know my life, if you want happiness to me, I'm reading the Bible now. See, God? Wow. You said if you would stop. God. What's going on? Right. Uh -huh. and, and I just Pour myself to him. Wow. And the very next week, the disciple came into wow. the wow. my life. Wow. Yes. My life this is very important. And we see that when we cry out to God, God delivers you. Yeah. Yes, he does. But before the Israelites cry out to God, what were they doing? They were hiding. They were hiding. Yeah. They were yeah. no. <laughs> <He's a man. laughs> yeah. They were hiding in their caves. This morning, are you hiding from God? Are you hiding from your sin? Are you hiding from your purpose? You see, many times we can go to this state of doing nothing, and that's a symptom of depression. 
Yeah. And we can be like, no, I expect my leader to fix it. Oh. I oh. expect they to fix it. I expect God to fix it. But I gotta say, no, 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 come out of your cave and cry. Cry out to me. Yeah. And it says, when you cry out to God, God delivers me. Yeah. Wow. You know, there's something special about crying. In Japan, this is real, guys. There is crying clubs. Wow. wow. Crying clubs. Yeah. There is like arts clubs, sports clubs, right. etc. There is crying <coughs> clubs. Wow. Yeah. And they come together because they realize, hey, when we cry out to you, just cry out. Yeah. <laughs> Your emotions, your heart, your 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 mind is is free. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's real. Yeah. yeah. Come on. And so, what more when we're disciples? Yeah. When God wow. wants you to cry out to Him. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Now, when was the last time you cried out to Him? Oh. If you know you're weak, this is your solution. You gotta cry out to God. Amen. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You know, let's continue moving forward. Come on, Zay. It's awesome. Verse 11 it says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joseph the Abesarite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat and wine first to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go, and the strength you have, and save Israel of Midian's hands. Am I not saying it? This is amazing. This is amazing because we see now the story of Gideon. And our second point is, Go in the strength you have. Amen. This is incredible. You know, a guy comes up as an angel and he says, Gideon, you're either going to be the mighty warrior. But Gideon is hiding. He's afraid. He actually doubts himself. But like, do you want to do you want that kind of warrior? Mm. I don't know. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm not sure if I want to follow this guy. God is faithful. Right? But God looked at him. I said, you're going to be a mighty warrior. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on you see, a, a lot of people, Great. we can look around and say, man, these people are not great. Mm. Man, I'm not great. Wow. But it's not about that. It's about how God sees you. Yeah. And right. the, and Come God. on, bro. God sees the opportunity. God sees the potential. Not the else. And so the angel comes to Gideon and says, you got this. You, want yeah. you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. But Gideon starts to doubt himself, question God. How confident are you with God? Wow. Seriously, how confident? You see, something that I myself have learning is to be confident. You know? Come on, bro. Now, let's, let's not mix it up. There, there's a difference between prideful yeah. and being confident. Amen. Amen. But, but God calls us to be confident in the Lord. Yeah. And when you're confident, you walk different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a million bucks right now. Oh. Yeah. After lunch, it's all me. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you walk differently, you show up differently, you act differently because you know you got a million bucks. Right. Amen. But how much more when you know that God is with you? Right. The confidence you have, like man, I'm awesome because God is awesome. Right. Yeah. Right. How confident do you see yourself with God? Mm. And then God comes to him and is like, hey, I know you're, you're weak. Just go in the strength you have. Mm. Just go in the strength you have. You know, it's awesome that um, when you go to the gym yeah. and you start to work out, yeah. right? and maybe the first few weeks you can't do uh, that uh, pull up, not pull up. Well, amen, bro. <laughs> amen, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the and then you have a spot. You know who's my spot in my life? Oh, 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 oh. And then I, I, sometimes I, I, I can't anymore. And then my wife comes and just with two fingers. Oh, 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 oh. You know, all right. You know, but it's awesome because I'm doing all I can. I'm doing all I can, but then you have a spotter. Right. I hate my guy. That's right. Oh, 
fun. And all that he requires of me is just to give me your all. Let's go to the Chronicles. Second Chronicles as we close out. Come on, bro. Awesome, bro. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Verse 9. Mm, good one. It says, For the eyes of the Lord raise throughout the earth to strengthen those who are fully committed This is amazing. God from heaven is looking down on earth and he sees, Boy, who can I strengthen? Wow. Who can I make someone weak to being strong? Oh, I know. Those who are fully committed. Wow. Come on. Yeah. Right there, bro. Come on. A, a, a misconception that we have as disciples is that we think that hey, we can't be committed if we're weak. What? No, 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 not at all. You can be committed when you're weak. Come on. So see here we see that, that God, how does he turn us into a Gideon? Number one, we gotta cry out to God. We gotta cry out to God. God, help me, please. Secondly, confess and sin. Come on. Yeah. You know, there's less understood, like, hey, it's on us. Mm. Come on. Confess. See, when was the last time you confessed that? Yes, yes. I remember that when I was at in a spiritual, very bad, very weak, my disciple would challenge me, hey, bro, confess in daily. Come on. Great. And, and man, the first weeks were like the list was long. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> like, bro, you sure you want to hear this? Okay. Let's roll. Right. So, <laughs> and then the more I confess daily, I started to look at my sin and it's like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Yeah. I gotta I gotta do something. Yeah. And then the more I confess in daily and daily, the list started to shrink. That's right. Come on. And it's awesome. It's very awesome when you confess sin, you get healing. That's what James talks yeah. about. Come on. We got to confess sin daily. Yeah. Come on. And there, go in the strength we have. Yeah. We understand that to be committed, you can also be weak. Yeah. Well, but when you're committed, God turns you to weak to being strong. Yeah. So if you're weak, come to church early. Amen. Yeah. So That's if you're weak, share your faith. Amen. If you're weak, Come and do a Bible study. Come on. Every week, serve. Every week, read your Bible. Every week, pray. But we see that God, looking down above, he says, how can I make you strong? Yeah, come on. Here's the exercise. Yeah. This morning, let us be disciples that, yes, we're all in different areas in our lives spiritually. Yeah. But how can we be strong is right here in the Bible. Let's cry out to God. Let's confess sin. And let's give it all that we got and see God make the super region strong. And thank you. Come on. Come on.
there's always ideas, there's always things that you want to do, uh, but you wait for approval. Mm. I want to, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. I'm going to talk to my uh, shepherd, I'm going to talk to my leader to see if it's okay. Instead of just going out there and doing it. You know, if you go out there and share with a hundred people, you're going to hit from me. And God's going to put somebody in your path. And then everybody else is going to ask people, how did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it's all God. For your older brothers, who we've been around for such a long time, you know, um, one of the questions that I ask myself, am I fully committed? Yeah. There's a lot of things that happen in my life that struggle the daily. And then I read the scripture. Well, Jose read it for us. He said, God is looking. He's looking to see are you fully committed? Because he's what God is looking for, for each and every one of us to strengthen us more. But are you fully committed? Are you fully committed? Wow. And that really hit me. I said, okay, how do I how do I get to be more, more committed? You know, I do the everyday things. I read my Bible, uh, I share, I'm in studies, and I'm going and I'm going through all the motions, right? But that may be it. Maybe I'm just going through the motions. Maybe my heart's not really, really there. Right? So I'm gonna cry out to God and God help me. Help me with everything. Help me in my life, help me with my uh, wife, help me with my kids. Help me to be fully committed. 